are Mr. Duvall ain't satisfied sexually. His drive is too high. You don't have to force anyone to eat ice cream, something that they enjoy. What is going on in this home that this juicy, vibrant woman in her sexual peak and prime, is he using her body as a human masturbatory sleeve? I am not allowed, <laughs> based on our marriage laws and uh -huh. the, the contract we've signed with each other, right. to have sex with anybody else. Right. So these urges that come, mm -hmm. I have to share them with the one person <laughs> I decide to spend the rest of my life with. Right. So that, that brings me back to my, my, my soundbite, okay. right? I don't understand, and this is what we can discuss mm -hmm. as a woman, because I don't, I don't want to say it's a man versus woman thing, but a lot of women do complain, oh, my husband's always on me. Why is he always on me? Mm -hmm. If sex is going to be a chore for you that you don't really want to do, why do women constantly push monogamy on men? If you know that you don't want to have to deal with him all the time just wanting you, mm -hmm. Why do you push monogamy on that? Well, who's to say I pushed anything on anybody? Like, well, we know that people, you pushed monogamy on me. I pushed monogamy. I forced you to get married to me. Time out. I didn't say you forced me to get married, but you, did you not say to me that you wanted to be engaged and you wanted to be married before you lived with me? You I didn't want, say that. I want a billion dollars. That don't mean I'm going to get it. I but, can want but something, asking, but not you, you. Right now, you nobody, dodging the question. Nobody pressed you to to do it. Yes, is that something I wanted? Yes, it was. But you didn't impress me. To, are you going to lie now so to the people because we talking about sex? Deval, you're going to lie now to the people? Deval, no. Okay, you didn't want to lie to me? Of course I did. So then why are you avoiding the question? That's not avoiding the question. I'm saying, does that mean because I want it and I requested that, that you were going to deliver it? Like nobody pressed you for that. Tama, you just said you wanted it and requested it. Do you not hear yourself? I can make a request. Is the request. I'm sorry. I had to pause this. That is such a bad example for her to use. Let's keep going for. It's going to be granted. Am I That's not? Up to am, you, I, bro. am I not granting you monogamy? You are granting it to so, me. So this is my question. Look this at is my question. always look at this. Look at, look at your boy. Look at your boy. This is my question. If you wanted monogamy, okay. Why would you want monogamy if monogamy if if sex is a chore for you? That's the question. You're avoiding the question. I'm not avoiding the question, but at first you said me, women or or in general me specifically are pushing monogamy on somebody. Okay, yes, that's something that I wanted, but I didn't press you for it and be like, "Devalma, hold a gun to your head to propose to so me." Time out. Do also, women... okay. also, let me finish. Also, I don't feel like I was adequately prepared. For marriage. And I've said that before, because if I knew that marriage and monogamy was going to involve me trying to meet you where you were at sexually for years to come, then I probably would have reevaluated it if I wanted to be monogamous anyway. So that's fair. But we're not even even talking about marriage. Let's even talk about dating. Right. OK. Two people are dating. Typically in society, who asks for exclusivity first, a woman or a man? I would say a woman. Thank you. That was my whole point. So you were going all over the place. If women typically ask for exclusivity first, then when they get exclusivity, say, such a lie. Always on me. He always want to have sex. Why are we asking men for exclusivity if we do not want to participate in sex, for, in sex at the same level as men? We have to think about what I, that does to a man. I and I don't think that that's being th that conversation is being had. OK, I agree. And that part I agree with. Yes, that women are typically the ones that will ask for the exclusivity. I get that. Yes. But what I'm saying is me as a woman, I don't think that I was necessarily prepared or in the mindset to know that. It's almost like once you get into it, then you're like, oh, shoot, like this is what I'm going to have to keep up with. I get that. Us speaking as 36 year old people know that now. Had I known that at 26, I get that. I would have to contend with that. Even that. in the dating realm, I then it might have been something I would have reevaluated. So now let's go back to what you asked me. You said to me, you never pressured me to get married. In 2007, we were living together, right? You said you no longer wanted to live up with me and shack up with me because mm -hmm. you wanted to be my wife, not my girlfriend. Right, because I wanted to know where that the don't relationship sound like was going. pressure to you. It sounds like me voicing where I see my life going. It it sounds like me saying this is what I would like. You can decide to meet me there. If not. We can reevaluate what exactly we're doing. Okay. Would I call it pressure per se? Not necessarily pressure. Uh, 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 it is. It is. It is pressure. But you don't want to say it's pressure. What about being you engaged? You might have felt pressure. What about there being was no engaged? Pressure behind it. I said, we don't got to rush to get married. You said, I don't want to be engaged longer than a year. Is that not pressure? 
that's me voicing <laughs> my opinion about it. Uh, sounds like pressure to me. So you say you want to be engaged. I get engaged. You say you want to be married within a year. We do that. We get married. Then you make it seem like, like sex is a chore to your husband. Once again, I ask the question, why do women who push forth monogamy on the man they're dating then get overwhelmed when that man who tries to provide that monogamy to you, why do you get upset when we're trying to be what you want us to be? You don't want me to be with no one else, right? right? I'm asking. This is so right. yeah, You don't want me to be with no one else. Absolutely. So if I decide that all this testosterone I have, I want to give to you. Why is this so overwhelming now? This is what you asked for. Again, 26 and 27 year old Kadeen uh -huh. was like, okay, here's the natural succession of life. You graduate, you're working, you meet somebody, you guys are dating. You want children. Yes. I want children. Yes. We don't want to wait too long or too late to have children. Yes. Though now a lot of people are waiting until their 30s to yes. have children. And I understand why. And we, and we, at that time felt like, well, we're doing everything in this natural succession that the forces that be have given us this timeline. However, I did not realize that after having children, after, you know, career changes, all of the turbulences that we've been through in life, that that was going to have a direct effect on my sex drive. Oh, hold on. I got to stop her. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord, you know what? Oh Lord, oh God. You know what, there's so much to jump into too, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play two more videos and then I'm gonna play the follow-up for that. Hold on for a second. You know, all right. You know what, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and give my intros right now. I am Tanya TKO. I'm a self-love specialist and relationship expert. I'm a life coach and certified clinical hypnotherapist from tanyatko.com. And this video is a video that you all wanted me to do. You pushed me to do it. You pressured me to do it. And I really wanted to do this video. So I've held up all other videos until I could get this one out. And part of the reason that I'm doing this video is because this is spiraling. And I want to show you two other clips. I'm sorry, my microphone is coming. I need to, you know what? I'm trying something new with the cameras. So tell me what you think of we're actually using two cameras today. And I'm going to be switching to the other camera as soon as we get through. Yes, there's more, Grace. We are, we are doing this live right now. So go ahead and give your thumbs up and share the video on your timeline if you need to share it. Uh, it's just, uh, we're going to jump into some more. So because what ended up happening is Derek Jackson made a video. Then little, I don't want to call people names. I don't want to call people hood boogers. I'm trying to think of a different name. Um, mm, mm, male identified women started coming out on this tip. And I really want us to dive deep into this video. So let's play a little bit of Derek Jackson because part of the reason that I'm making this video is because of the, the follow-ups that we've seen. So we're gonna jump right into his commentary because Derek Jackson came at it from a different angle. So let's listen. My first thought was this. I thought there was a lot of emphasis on pressuring to marry, pressuring into monogamy, pressuring this, that, and the other. First, let me say this. There's a difference between a woman that is pressuring you and a woman that is setting a standard. Pressure is like trying to coerce over and over again, um, repetitive begging or you know repositioning of something that they've already asked, you've already said no to. But by the sounds of what she said and the fact that he didn't refute it or anything like that, it sounds to me like, almost like whenever you go to like a car dealership, you're interested in buying a car from somebody, they may let you test drive it for free and that's cool. But then at some point they may say, you know what? No more test driving, no more enjoying this car. The price of this car is $100,000. Okay. All right. You know what? Listen, we're going to stop this right there because you kind of got the gist, right? You kind of got the gist of the direction that he's coming from. So let me play a little bit of this other video for you so that you can get the gist of what this, um, this other woman is saying, because I thought that this needed to, this is why I'm making this video because of stuff like this. This right here. Just take just take a look. Take a listen. Take a ganda. Let's listen to this. Just a few moments of it, because I know you won't be able to take much. Listen. No self. So how you gonna know a nigga? How you gonna know what you want? A lot of y'all don't even understand what it takes to be in a monogamous relationship. 
Like y'all don't even understand. Y'all be wanting to lock a nigga in so bad. You don't really understand what it actually takes to be in a relationship where you're asking another person to solely focus on you for their intimacy, to solely focus on you for their companionship, to solely focus on you for a partnership in finances and in life and in bill paying and in goal setting. Like you ain't even whole enough to be a nigga everything. And when I be saying that, y'all bitches get on, on my videos and y'all get offended. Like I'm always taking up for the niggas. I'm always, but women be the main ones pushing for monogamy. I had to stop it. I had to stop. I had to stop. So you kind of get the gist. You kind of get the gist. And so what we're going to do is just, I can't do this. I'm sorry. This is just so damn difficult. This is just so damn difficult, you know, because it's like, hmm. It's difficult because this issue is a lot deeper than the surface level that a lot of people are coming at this with. So you see, this is part of the reason that I decided to make this video because we have so many male identified women who take an idea that a man said and then all of a sudden she just goes and runs off with it. And even Derek Jackson, I think Derek Jackson touched, but you know, his videos are so short. He doesn't really give time to dive in because there are so many arbitrals in this. And for those of you who watch the Tiny TKO show, you know, the arbitrals are reading between the lines. And so there's so many things to read between the lines on this for, but there's more to their podcast. And you know what? I want you to pay special attention to her face. Look at Kadeen's face when he's talking and think about the greater picture for what it is that he's implying by making a public broadcast talking about how he's not getting enough pum pum at home. Okay. So I want you to look at her face. We're going to play another clip from her because this is, I think it's so important for us to be able to really see the full context and greater context. And I'm going to give you some background information about other things that I know from being at a seminar with them that I'm going to add as, as greater context for actually the journey that they went on for when they got married, do the numbers, do the numbers, right? She said they're 36. She said, had I known this at 18, and then they were having the conversation in 2003, they've been married, I believe they said for 10 years. So you could get your pen and paper, do the math. You know, like how they show the, the different the, the mathematical equations spinning all around through your head. And I'm like, how long did he expect to swim in and out of her uterus before she said, you know what, let's settle down. And then we're going to talk about some, some information that I have that I don't know if they've talking up that they've talked about publicly. So let's jump right in. Let's jump, let's just continue. Let's continue. Here we go. I did not realize that after having children, after you know, career changes, all of the turbulences that we've been through in life, that that was gonna have a direct effect on my sex drive. And, That's fair. And and me not knowing that. If I knew it, then I probably would have rethought, you know, and, what I was going to do when it came to marriage and monogamy. And that is fair. And this is why I like to have this discussion. And I think we should have this discussion because people look at us and say, oh, relationship goals, right? Marriage goals. They don't know what what is being discussed behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for example, one of the things that I have deduced through being married to you for a long period of time is this. And this is not a about a woman thing, woman thing. This is about me and you. I learned that you were never taught what it entails to be with someone in a monogamous relationship. The same way no. I was never taught that. Right. So what happens is, is that we both have expectations of what we think it's going to be like. Of course. And then the minute it's not like that, mm -hmm. we start to project our issues that we have with that on each other. So you Naturally, get mad at me and I get mad on. at you. So the problem is, the problem is, is not so much the reality of what happens is that we all have this ideal of what it's supposed to be like. And I'm going to give you an example. As a man, right, in my 18, from 18 to 22, we had sex routinely, like all the time. Yes. That was it, mm -hmm. right? Once we moved. Listen, okay, you know what? I saw both of these before. Maybe they didn't say 18 in the first one, but you heard 18 in this one, right? She said she was 36 in the last one. Keep your calculators out. Okay, keep your calculators out. 
moved into it together and we were living together in our own house in Michigan, sex started to slow down. This was before kids. Mm -hmm. This was before marriage. This was before you was working. Mm -hmm. This was before any stresses, period. Right. This was just, you, you, like, sex just started to slow down. Right. And but also, part, too, 18 to 22 was like college. It was my first time out of my parents' house. Um, right. You know, we were living in this utopia that was college right. life. And also, too, um, what was the other thing that I was going to say? So we distance. We had distance. Yes, we had distance. So there was time so, for us to like miss each other and be like, absolutely. oh, I can't wait to see you again. And when we do That's see what each I was other. Getting to. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So <laughs> once we started to move in together right. and you see the same person every single night, mm -hmm. the distance that we had when we were in college and we would, I was traveling and we were doing different things, that distance allows time for you to kind of reboot your sex yes. drive. Yes. For me, I don't necessarily have to reboot my sex drive. The minute I see you, I want to have sex. So... When we were missing each other, it seemed normal that we had sex all the time. But then when we think about it, we really wasn't having sex all the time because we didn't see each other all the time. Right. Then when we moved in together and we see each other every day, every time I want to have sex, I look to you. It became overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So and the reason why I say that is because the conversation starts happening was why do men fear marriage? Mm -hmm. Why do men fear marriage? And mm -hmm. I'm going to explain this so that everybody can understand this. Mm -hmm. When you're a man, a young man, and you talk to your friends who are married about getting married the first thing they do is say take your time right <laughs> they don't ever explain why because men aren't vocal we don't discuss these things we're not emotional mm -hmm. all they'll say is Whew, take your time you got you got time for that you sure you want to do this and they're like yeah you sure and they're like you know shit gonna change and then you're like what does that mean oh don't worry about it shit gonna change so no one really tells you as a man neither what exactly is going to change and how it's going to change and why it's changing but I've learned over years. I'm sorry, I just had to pause it real quick. I had to pause it. Okay. <sighs> I just want you all to just take special notice to when he went to the elders, what the elders said to him. Let's keep going forward. It's why it's changed and how it's changed. So as a man, you start to realize like, you know what? We are not just wired differently mentally. Physically, we are wired differently. She can't take everything that you want to give her all the time. But since no one tells you that, you just expect that this woman who wants me to be loyal to her, monogamous to her, is going to want to have sex every time I want to have sex. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you move in with a woman and you live with her all the time that you realize that she can't do that. You see what I'm saying? So not only are women not being taught what it's like to be in a monogamous relationship, young men are not being taught what it's like to be in a monogamous relationship. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? No, I understand completely because I... I experience i need to pause this again i'm sorry and i'm sorry for keeping pausing it i mean it's a long clip anyway so we could break up the monotony i'm sorry i just have to say this right now you know there's a reason why women evolved to having their menstruation inside there's a reason why women's bodies are designed the way that they are designed inside not menstruation i'm sorry ovulation so that the signs of ovulation for us as the mammalian walking upright homo sapiens that we are because rumor has it that ovulation you know like the like the monkeys that have the pink butts when they're when they when they're ovulating that they say that early woman was very similar to that so that when she was in heat that it was something that was broadcast to the world i mean even now our voice sounds sweeter when we're ovulating. Even now, our pheromones are different when we're ovulating. So like, you'll notice that, that like men, you'll notice that, ooh, a woman's voice is like, like sometimes when they, you know, I don't, I don't want to use, let's keep going. I don't want to use myself as an example, but there's a reason why it became more discreet when a woman was uh, physically able to produce or physically at the, the prime space point at in during the month to produce offspring. There's a reason why a lot of these things are internal. And when you look to the elders to give you advice and the elders are like, she ain't going to be able to take all you want to get. No, there are things that men can do to be able to, there, there are things that you can do to keep your woman interested. But those things start long before the bedroom. Let's continue to go forward because I took notes. We're going to go through a whole video on this. Don't worry. I got you. Don't worry.
it's the same thing. And that's why I'm grateful for platforms like this or just our mm. generation of people who are speaking up and speaking right. out and speaking to each other about these things, because then maybe people will mm -hmm. make more educated decisions about whether or not they do want to be married or they do want to be in a monogamous relationship or, you know, what act actually is involved in that. And the crazy thing about marriage is that, you know, one of the things you always hear is like, you know, you got to compromise, you got to compromise. But like what happens when one party feels like they're compromising more than the other, or one person feels like they're sacrificing more than the other, then that becomes an issue because a lot of times we try to meet each other halfway, but you still feel like you're ended up with the short end of the stick. And it just may be too, because you literally have a bigger sex drive than me. And for me, it just takes way more to get me to a point sometimes where right. I'm even willing to do that. Like back to your story. It was like, damn, I know I promised him. Mm -hmm. I promised him some ass tonight. Promised me. And I was like, damn, I can't not, do this but i want to go to sleep like i really just want to wash it. my face and go to sleep but i don't want to disappoint him so there i felt like you know what mm -hmm. let me try to do something to genuinely get myself in the mood or with some assistance so this is and this then... is what she did <laughs> listen i just i'm sorry to stop again i just want you all to pay special note that it does sound like for her sex is a chore why though that's going to be the question that we're going to ask when we come back out of this. Why? Why is it a chore? Uh, this, <laughs> this is what she did. The ponytail. This is what she I want you all to remember. This woman is at her sexual peak. Remember, I told you to do the math. She's 36. Let's keep going forward. She felt like. Now, here's another thing, too. And, and let's be fair. I'm willing to compromise, right? Yes, Am I not? You are willing to. We compromise. don't have sex every day. We don't have sex in college. We, we have sex two times a day. You know, we see each other. We was like rabbits, Son. right? I compromise. And I even said to you, I'm not going to push for when I want to have sex. I'm going to allow you to get back in the mood. And then when you come to me to have sex, because I want the sex to be enjoyable. Sex, but it'd be a problem right? when me having to reset my sex clock be longer than you expect it to be. No, listen. And then that'd be a problem. What, what I have figured out for myself is that marriage to me, because there were points in our marriage and I was like, yo, this is just seems selfish. And I don't know if I could mm -hmm. exist in this. Mm -hmm. And then you start to weigh what's important right. to you. You know what I'm saying? Like what's important? Like I said before, you're my best friend and you're a business partner. You and I hmm. have not only developed a brand and developed a business model that works for you and I mm -hmm. and works for building a legacy for our kids, but we've built a friendship that I think would outlast anything because when we were broke, especially after the NFL, mm -hmm. you and I were still best friends and we still found ways to enjoy life and enjoy each other during our harshest times. No money, we were struggling with our sex life, we had just had a child, we were struggling. Mm -hmm. But somehow through that, you and I found a way to create a great life. Mm -hmm. So for me, as a married man, it's like, all right, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments in the things that I, I want as a man. And like you said, what do I what do I think about in my legacy, right? Why do I get married? What do men think of, you know, what what's the thought process? I know I wanted a lot of kids. I want boys and girls. That's the reason you got to have a daughter. That's part of the legacy I want to leave. I want to be able to raise a daughter who's intelligent, who's beautiful, who has a lot of self self-worth. I want to be able to give the world a, a, a young lady with those type of attributes. And I feel like we collectively can do that. So part of my legacy is not only just doing everything I can for myself mm -hmm. or for us, but it's also in growing another productive member of society. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that to both a, a young man and a young woman. I have three boys, I want a, a young daughter. If that means I have to sacrifice other aspects of my life that may not seem perfect in what I expected, then I'm willing to do that. Because then I start to realize what I felt was perfect was only what was fed to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I think That's that if, if people would have fed to me the reality of being in a monogamous relationship mm -hmm. from young, I would have known what it was rather would than Would you have still done it or would you have been like, mm, I'm, I'm not still doing, be doing it now? It. Yeah. I'm still doing it I mean, now. I don't, yeah, I don't, you could have bailed, but you didn't. I could, and you, and you could have bailed. And I could have bailed. For so sure. we both made an active <laughs> choice. Right. We continuously make an active choice to mm -hmm. be here. It's like, yeah. Because, it's, and it's you a know, prioritizing. It is prioritizing. Happens. Okay. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Oh, goodness. Thank goodness it's over. Thank goodness it's over. Thank goodness it's over. Thank God. All right. Let's jump into my notes.
this is a I'm oh, sorry this is a video I was very apprehensive about making because this is a video that's going to take time for us to dive and jump into all of the stuff that we need to dive and jump into but I took some notes let's go piece by piece by piece um what are the arbitals that you all picked up on I want you to write them in the comments below yes this video is live at the moment and I can see your comments and I saw what some of you were saying during the thing so some of that I may incorporate into this video when we come to the end of it so listen all right the question is, why do women constantly push monogamy? Uh, they talk about requesting monogamy before, that she requested monogamy before living together and exclusivity and uh, who asked first, the women. Oh God, you know what? You know what? Oh God, this, this angers me so much. I'm gonna try to calm down. We're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it together. Hmm. You know, we have been bamboozled as a society. We've been brainwashed into, into women self-monogamizing, right? We've been brainwashed into self-monogamizing and thinking of our vaginas as this, um, as this, 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 this gift, this honey pot, this cookie, this reward, this, this, this thing, right? And we have been taught that you're dirty if you like other men, or you're dirty if you like intercourse, you're dirty, right? So we self-monogamize in these relationships because we just want to keep it to one person. We don't want to be thought of as that scatel or that whatever skeezer, whatever word you want to come up with. There's so many of them because when you think of promiscuous, the word promiscuous basically, or for the most part, only refers to women. You know, really, when you think about promiscuous, besides that song that came out with Will I Am and that 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 chick, <clears throat> promiscuous had never really been used towards men, right? Because there is something wrong with a woman being promiscuous. So when we talk about who asks for monogamy first, we all know, God, let's take a survey. Let's take a survey. Let's take a survey. Let's take a survey. Can a man deal? Can a man deal with the ganda getting an anaconda? <laughs> Can a man deal with it? If you say yes, that a man can really deal with his woman going out there and getting some other pipe someplace else, put up the number one. If you know for good and God, gosh darn certain that the male, the male, the psyche, the, the physicality of a male, the DNA of a male just cannot really deal with a woman dating him and also splitting it open, turning it around, spinning around, bunking over, putting it up and down for some other man. Put up a number two if you know that he's just not built that way. So for the most part, women self-monogamize into these relationships because that is the expectation. And within this expectation, she's like, well, you know, I have centered myself just on you and this relationship. So wh where are we going? What are we going to do? Also, women have a biological clock. Let's talk. Let's talk about what it is that I learned. I told you I was going to share some things that I learned when I was at a seminar. I was at the Black Love Seminar with these two, two years ago. When I was at this seminar, they talked about the journey of their relationship. They met when they were in college very early on. This man, he played football. He was traveling a lot. He was the, the toast of the town, handsome man. And even now you see him with his shirt wide open and ads and everything on their page and stuff. And we're going to talk about what are one of the implications of him making a video like this, letting the female populace with a great portion of pick me's out there know that homeboy just ain't really getting it as much as he liked to get it at home. We're going to talk about that in a while. So just get your comments ready, right? What I learned at this seminar is they broke up. Their relationship was on again, off again. So they talk about, oh, we met at 18 and da, 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 da. Their relationship was on and off, on, on and off again. And from what it is that I gathered, she kind of had an idea. This guy was going places and she wanted to really kind of hold on to him, right? But, I mean, because he's young, he's fine. He could play sports. He felt like he's going, this my, you know, he's a star. He's going to shooting, shooting star. He's, his, his trajectory is going up this way. I kind of want to hold on to this. And black women, we know, and we understand, we know, because when you're in college and you're looking around and you're like, Ooh, you know, this one, this is my horse right here that I'm a bet on. Right. 
Some of them is a good gamble. Some is a bad gamble because you can't really bet on somebody else's success. But let's go forward. From what it is that I learned at this seminar, these two had broken up. She left him. So this is part of the reason it's like when you when you when we start doing these relationship goal stuff and you're looking at other couples on and, and oh you got to get them while they're young. I, I I feel sorry for any woman who tries to settle down with a young man who hasn't really fully lived. And it's like for women, like you see, the thing is that there's so many lies being told about women and the female sex drive and, and what women really crave and, and how many women really step out. The thing is that women have such finesse that there are far too many men out there who don't, that don't know that their woman is cheating. They don't know. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. So let's talk. They had broken up. He said that he was like, good, go. And by the time she got to the car, he was at the window hollering down onto the floor in a puddle of tears. I mean, this is a very beautiful young woman. He knew, he knew. And the thing about it is, listen, if he didn't want to get married, he should have just tossed the fish back out into the sea. Listen, there's plenty of fish out there in the sea, right? He could have found a woman who was, who was, who, who wanted to do things how, but no, he loves that woman. He said that this is his best friend. That is the woman that he wants. He wanted her. He wanted this relationship. But now, after the fact, when all is said and done, now he's like, oh, you pressured me. The question that all of us can ask is, why is it that for far too many men, and listen, there's a, there's a, there's a, a cultural and racial aspect to this as well. Why is it that Black men just don't, naturally feel that 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 urging to get into the next stage of life this the next milestone like okay now it's time to settle down you know now it's time to create a family now it's time to 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 make this union and and have a special union that exists just between us because when we talk about monogamy monogamy is not about sex in the same way, polygamy is not about sex. Monogamy is a marital structure where there's one man and one woman. You have polyandry where there's one woman and multiple men. You have polygyny where there's one man and multiple women. Then you have polygamy, which is the practice of just having more than one spouse, right? So my question is, if you can't, please one woman enough, if you can't please one woman enough to have a woman in her sexual peak, in her sexual prime, be clawing at you, what is it that's going on with you and either your skill, your attention to detail, your whatever the case may be, or what is existing outside of the bedroom in the house that is making her not feel moist, that's making her feel dry. What is it that's going on? So I ask you all the question, the numbers are going to be three and four, right? And listen, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And I don't know this couple very well. Like when I was at the seminar with them, I didn't even realize how famous they were until I went back and, you know, added them on Instagram and stuff like that, right? The numbers are going to be three and four. We're going to take a survey. This is for men and women to answer, right? From what it is that you've seen, if you have seen their stuff, don't answer if you haven't seen any of their videos and this is the first time that you're coming into contact with them. But if you've seen their other videos, right? And I want you to be very honest. Do you get the sense that this man holds up the mantle of, hmm, how do I put this? I want to put this the right way. Do you think that he's helping her around the house in terms of disciplining the children, in terms of being that equal partner with her, with equal distribution of, listen, because you want to talk about creating a, a wonderful addition to society. Do you think that he is doling out equal Equal, equal, oh, what do you call that stuff when you discipline? Yeah, equal discipline for the children, equal housework, equal being that parent and not a friend, 
right? Put up a number three if you think that he's holding up that space on the same level that she is, and he is that 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 stoic figure that she can turn to and be on the same page with the with the rearing of the children and the disciplining of the children and all of that if you feel that that they that they share the chores and all of this stuff equally put up the number three if you get the sense this is going to be very cruel that i'm going it may be cruel if you get the sense, and I just want to see from you all, if you get the sense that he is another child that she has to raise, put up a number four. If you feel that he leaves the bulk of the parenting to her, put up the number four. If you feel that he plays the clown and he's like daddy friend, like I'm going to be friends to my kids. And, ha, 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 look at you. Ooh, 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 you're so cute. Go, go get the discipline from your mama. Put up the number four. Look at the fours coming in. I'm not making this up. You all get the same. And I, I asked you only to, to vote if you have also seen their other stuff. So it's like, what is going on in this home that this juicy, vibrant woman in her sexual peak and prime, she's 36. This is the time that the human body is like, oh, you know, Clock is ticking. Let me get these babies in there. So your body, listen, your body, it starts for a woman. Listen, ladies, you know, when you start turning 30, you start feeling a little, it's like a little dragonfly inside. That dragonfly. You remember the, the, the cartoon I had, um, Frenchie? You remember that? When you turn 30, you're like, mm, you're ready to rip. Somebody else apart and yourself too to get to some. But what's going on in this household? It's like, it's like, and listen, don't get me wrong. I know she loves a funny man. We Many women love that man that's comedic. But when you are in the parenting situation and you're carrying the brunt end of it, because if you all have seen the videos and I've only seen a few of them, but in the few that I have seen, he's like, look at Kadeem in mommy mode. Three, two, when then here she comes with the scarf on and she's like, you better not be filming this. And she's like disciplining the kids. What are you all doing? And he's just sitting there laughing, ah, 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 rolling around. Ah, ah, ah. And he's over there tickling the kids. And, ah, ah, ah. and meanwhile, it's big bad mama Kadeen coming in to, to wield the, the, the discipline. Come on now, you all have seen it. Let's keep going. Let me, you know what? As a matter of fact, I just got my notes out. Let me make sure that, that I make sure I say everything that, that we need to say on this, right? Okay, monogamy. Okay, okay, listen, monogamy. To say, oh, why would you want to be monogamous if you can't handle all that it is that I'm bringing? The first question that I asked myself was, well, how often is he attempting to have intercourse? Does he have some sort of sex addiction? Is it really more about just squeezing off a nut? Is he using her body as a human masturbatory sleeve? Because there's this, this misconception going around that, that, that when a man's penis goes up, it has to be put down. Otherwise, he's going to be in physical pain and he's gonna, he can't control himself. He'll just go wild and all this other stuff. No, if you if, if if look, if your penis goes up, it can go right back down. It's just blood that goes inside there. When you're working out, blood goes to your limbs. And when you cool down, it, the blood leaves your limbs. So it's like, no, why is your solution to why is your solution to think that monogamy is the problem? So you think that maybe if you were polygamous, if you had maybe another wife, that then you would, that then your sexual needs will be then satisfied? It's like the, a relationship between one man and one woman is a marital structure. If you had more than one woman, then you'd have to deal with the getting to know these other women, doing the things that pleases them in such a way that the doors open. Instead of the, you, the, the woman having to pry open her own doors, like, oh, I promised I was going to, but I'd rather go to sleep. Let me bring this up now. I was going to bring this up later in the video. Let me tell you something. I love ice cream. I do. 
I love chocolate, vanilla. I love strawberry. I love the different flavors with the pecan pieces or the fudge pieces or the almonds or the pecans or the mint or the cookies. Oh, the, the cookie bits and the cookie dough. I love ice cream. So sweet, so nice. I love the silkiness. Like when you wrap your tongue on it, you feel that, that, that coldness become cool and then you feel that sweet silkiness. I love ice cream. I can eat ice cream every day. It is not a chore at all, at all. When that intercourse is, listen, you don't have to force anyone to eat ice cream, something that they enjoy. Why do you have to force a person? It, what's going on with, with what's happening in, in your bedroom, in your life, that it feels like a force? Why do you have to what, feel like a chore? Why does New York accent chore? Listen, why does it feel like a chore? I mean, the enjoyable things in life, oh, we can't get enough of those. Even if it was, you know what? I know that I enjoy this act so much that I'm going to allow myself to be put in the mood. But when you prefer to go to sleep, and listen, I understand the longer a relationship is, the more difficult it is to, to, to spark that flame, right? But so then that begs the question, is he using her body as a masturbatory sleeve just so that he could be able to get his release within her hole? Because if that's the case, then he can just use an apparatus to be able to get him over the edge if his penis is popping up that much that it needs to be put down and it doesn't really... It, so like, remember he said that he felt resentful. Like, I don't know if I can exist in this like this because it seems selfish that she's holding her, her coochie to herself. So it's like, why is it that you are dependent on your woman for all of your, why is it that you're dependent on another human being for all of your gratification anyway? Like we saw that, we heard that ignorant woman who was cursing and calling women bees and men ends. Nobody should be somebody's be all end all. Why is it that you listen and nobody knows how to make you climax like you do. If you, if you know what you're doing, which you've had your practice right? So if it's just a case of needing to let the edge off a little, and why is it that he hasn't gotten to the point of maturity? Because listen, we know that he's not in his sexual peak anymore. He's not in his, he's just, that those days are done. 21, a boy peaks at 21. I don't know how often they are having intercourse, but let's bring up the implications of saying this out loud in public, because now he has so many women out there that knows that his balls are fibrillating down there underneath inside his pants that his balls is just gyrating and, and just, uh, that all she got to do is what? Because you know, there's so many desperate women out here wishing, they, they see other, they see married men and they want, they, they, first of all, they have anger at marriage and relationships and all this other stuff. So they, a, a married man is even more appealing to them. Now let him have a little bit of money. Plus there's so many black women out here desperate for a black man that knows how to be faithful. And she doesn't even mind being number two because she never really felt she deserved to have a full time and this and the other. So there's so many, the market is just so wide and big out there. And especially if he's out there traveling around and all of this. Oh, now he didn't let it be known. Ah, Mr. Duvall ain't satisfied sexually. His drive is too high. He needs more than one woman. Now he's done put the advertisement out there. I told you, look at her face. She looks embarrassed and mortified. Look at her face. And he's like, ah, oh. now the ladies know. All they got to do is what? Cup him up on the, on the pant front. Cup up, cup up in front. And then just jiggle it around a little bit. Push some soft eyes upon him. That part really annoyed me because I'm like, there's far too many desperate biddies out here. Why is his response to not, not being able to get as much release into his woman's body as he wants? Why is his response to that to think about adding different energies into the relationship? Monogamy, when you're monogamous with a person, you don't have to worry. Listen, sex is something that is unique and special to your relationship. That's it. There's no other energy, sexual energies coming into your relationship. It's your partner and your partner and you have this connection and that is unique. You reserve this for only your partner. 
That's like a woman turning around and being like, if you knew that you didn't want to buy me everything that I wanted, why did you push for monogamy? It's like, no, monogamy is about a lot more than just how much your partner buys you or how much skins or ass your partner is given up to you. Monogamy is a, is a, is a, is a marital structure that both people agree upon. And if he knew that he had these, these urgings and these cravings for multiple partners and all this other stuff and multiple wives, because it doesn't really sound like he's, he wants to marry another woman. It sounds like he just wants a, a warm hole to squirt off in. It doesn't really sound like he wants to invest in these other relationships. Speaking of squirt off in, 18 years they've been together, 18 years. And he's still talking about how she pushed him into monogamy, pressured him. Like I said in the beginning of this video, you all pressured me to make this video, but ultimately it was my choice to make this video. Far too often we see too many black men especially go into something and then blame the woman for how things turn out. You're a man, you're a leader. If you know, listen, if this is what that woman requires and you want that woman you do what it takes for that particular woman. If you don't really want that woman, then you're not going to do what it takes for that particular woman. He could have let her go 18 years ago, 10 years ago, even 13 years ago. She said that she wanted, she wanted, uh, she didn't want to be living together in sin in that way, right? So they've been married for 10 years now. She spent 18 years of her life with this man. At what point was he going to come up with, this is embarrassing. At what point was he going to be like, you know what, let's make this official. Why is it that he's trying to say that it was her idea? Oh, let me just make sure I got all my notes done. Oh, monogamy has benefits. That's one of the other things that I wanted to talk about. I want you all in the, in the comment section to write down what are some of the benefits of monogamy. Because monogamy has benefits for men and monogamy has benefits for women. Marriage has benefits. And it's, the worst part about it is that men benefit more from marriage than women do. But then now he's going to come after the fact with amnesia. Like he doesn't remember rolling around on the floor in a puddle of tears wanting his Kadeem back. So it's like if she would have gone off with another man, he would have still been sitting here talking about this is the one that got away. And this is this is just so frustrating and so annoying to me, especially when there are other women who are coming out talking about, oh, you, you can't be a man, everything. Not even man, just, oh. And this goes far beyond what Derek Jackson was talking about in terms of standards. It's like, come on. And the worst part about it, I'll say this before I jump out of here. I'll read some of your comments and I'll jump out. I'll say this. Unfortunately, far too often, listen, only 21% of Black men in America get married. And far too often, it is just known. Far too many men need those ultimatums. Otherwise, if you don't give them the ultimatums, then you'll just allow them to just swim in and out of you for what, 18 years? 18 years later, he's still talking about why pressure a person into monogamy. Really, son? Is you serious? I'm like, come on. So it's like, come on, come on. It's like you as a grown man, head of household. Well, I mean, is he really head of household? Because like, I, like we, we already did the survey. Come on. How long were you going to stay in this situation where there's no, no paperwork? You all read that thing about that man who was, in, he was dating some woman for 25 years and she kept saying she wanted to get married. He said she was moving too fast. It's like, how long will you allow a person to swim in and out of your body without being like, you know what? We need to do something different because... And the crazy part about it is that men know that they love when a woman is monogamous because then you know that the children are yours. But then go out there and have multiple partners then and see what type of complications it has. Speaking of which, she said that he allows her to be on her own time clock until it's taken too long. You peeped that, right? I'm going to just let you all answer the rest of this. I knew this was going to be a long video. I didn't know that it was going to be this long. So listen, peace of mind about STDs, exactly. 
I had a supervisor who was with his eight years, three kids, and that point, no interest of, exactly, no interest of getting married, exactly. I won't think marriage is beneficial to a woman unless the man is helping financially and emotionally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sharia is saying disease free. Annette is talking about, yeah, on their deathbed proposing to somebody. I'm not about to change your diapers, old ass man. I hear you. I hear you. LJ is saying monogamy is good from a self-discipline. Monogamy isn't natural, and sometimes it's good to do what's hard. Yeah, monogamy is not natural for human beings. It's not. But we make these choices to ensure that the energies that we have, that, that there's something unique, designatedly unique between this relationship that no other relationship has. <clears throat> Camera saying to remind me of the person who proposed after 40 plus years. Lavender saying, did you see the man that proposed after 45 years? It's, it's too much. It's too much. So Sandra is saying singleness of thought. I want you thinking about me only. I mean, monogamy, does monogamy say that a person will think about you only? Annette is saying peace of mind comes from monogamy being on one accord, building a strong, healthy, happily family unit. And just going on cooking and cleaning for their asses like a second child and blowing them regularly when you never get off yourself. It's so sad, the state of these loser men. It's true. 70% of women have never had an orgasm. So why would anybody be wanting to do all this and that and they're not getting the pleasure, they're not getting the release that they need from it? There's so many more questions that could be asked. But on that note, I'm going to jump out of here. And I want you to continue to leave your, your comments below. I want you to share this video and get other people's take on it. I know it was a bit long, but that's okay. You know, listen, you, you could listen while you're cleaning up and doing all of that other stuff. I know this was a longer video. So make sure that you share it because the YouTube algorithm is not going to, is not going to share this video out because of the length. So you have to make sure that you share it and that you share with other people to get their point of view as well. Was I off in something that I said? Was I too hard on him? What, did, did I say something that was not truth? That the, something that was a lie? I need to know. I need to know. So on that note, I'm going to bid you all adieu. I am Tanya TKO. This is my book of self-love affirmations. It is currently sold out worldwide, but it will be back in stock. Soon we're working on getting those new copies published. And I, um, listen, go out there and love one another. Most importantly, what? Love yourself. Yes, love yourself. And part of loving yourself is really having these deep, hard conversations with yourself about what is it that you are willing to put up with? What is it that, what do you want your life to look like? You know, it's like, I saw this, how many of you out there saw Jingle Jangle? If you saw Jingle Jangle, put up five. In Jingle Jangle, there was this beautiful, plump, fluffy woman who was singing to the main character. She was all in heat for him. But at the end of the day, what is it that she was getting? She was constantly getting rejection. And it's like, there's so many of us that don't understand. <sighs> Listen, there's so many of us that think that it's up to a woman to constantly have to deal with rejection, with a man's cheating, with his unfaithfulness, with his lies. Meanwhile, on the flip side of that, the man has your undivided attention. I mean, I just, from a self-love standpoint, I mean, it was good for comedic value for her to be singing and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day... You know, she's like, you're a good man. You're good. But really, you're a good woman. Take yourself over to somebody who wants you so that if you feel that you have to pressure a man into getting married, unfortunately, for far too many men, they just don't grow up fast enough. They just don't grow up fast enough. This is part of the reason that they're that there's sometimes a huge age gap between men and women because they just are on some other stuff while you're here they're still floating rotating around doing some other stuff and the last thing that you want is somebody to come and throw it in your face 
that they didn't want to get married and throw it in your face that they didn't want monogamy, throw it in your face in public. You know, it's like we get it set up in our minds that we want a particular type of man. This good looking man with the abs who's playing pro football that all the women want and all this, that, and the other. Make no mistake. There comes a point in every man's life where he's like, you know what? I want to come home to a family. I want to come home to a woman. And the type of men, look, they say that a man is only as faithful as his options, right? And so many of us, we want this full and full and total package, et cetera, et cetera. We want the man who's six feet and with the 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 rotating around anaconda and and all the money and the abs and all this that and the other. And you know, I'm starting a matchmaking service to connect black men and black men from the diaspora and black women in America so that we can get more family units together. And in my matchmaking service, I'm focusing on the internal, on creating good values, goals, and personality matches from people who are ready. You know, it's like far too often we give leeway and, and space for men who just aren't ready. And some of them will never be ready, but yet we keep giving of ourselves, giving of our time to these men. When there are other men, they may not have six pack abs. Maybe some of them do have six pack abs, but they're not seven feet tall and other things. Now, listen, I'm not telling you to settle. I'm not telling you to settle. What I'm saying is shift your focus into being with a person who is a good match for you and where it is that you want to go. Listen, it's just as simple as that. So that you don't have somebody trying to throw it back in your face. Cause I talk to men every day who want to settle down. My matchmaking service costs money and there are men willing to invest in being able to find the right woman for them. It's like the, the thing is that where it is that you're meeting these men, you may not, you, the, the, it's like a crop shoot. You don't know whether or not they're really at the stage, whether they have the money. Cause listen, let's, let's listen. A man is going to, a man before he wants to need to settle, wants to settle down is going to need to be able to have a certain amount of money, financial stability. But you know what? I promised we were getting out of this video. So we will talk about all of that in another video. My website is tanyatko.com. Come over, send me a message. I'll put you on the, join the mailing list. Come to my website, join the mailing list, and you'll get a notification for when my matchmaking service is launched. All right. So listen, on that note, I will see you all in the next video. Tanya TKO, and I'm out. I'll say it again. Go out there and love one another, but most importantly, love yourself. And loving yourself is having enough self-pride to know what it is that you will and will not deal with. This goes for men and women. Don't get pressured into marriage if you don't want to get married. Don't feel that you have to pressure a person into getting married. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, like I said, she had already left this man. And he's and he did what it is that he needed to do to make sure that he got her back. Now, years later, he has amnesia. Please let me get out of here. Tani TKO, and I'm out. Peace. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you thumbs up the video. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notifications to be notified of new videos. Leave a comment below, share the video, and come over to tanyatko.com to subscribe to my personal mailing list and drop me a message of a viral story that you'd like for me to cover. See you on the other side. Peace.